All right. Okay. Uh, I think uh, the previous time uh, we are looking at the, these uh, different organisms uh, that that belong to 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 phylum Arthropoda, and the, after looking at these organisms, I left an activity. Uh, which activity? Uh, you had a list of those organisms, and in the activity, uh, they had told us to what to do: construct a flow chart for any six organisms in the pictures using their observable characteristics. Do you remember any of that? Do you remember that activity? Yes, teacher. Okay, I was asking if, if anyone is in a position to share with us what they did uh, concerning that activity. Anyone who is ready? Uh, constructing a flow a flow chart. Okay, maybe I, I can first share uh, one that I have done already. Uh, I uh, for that activity, I I, I chose uh, organisms. Number one, three, five, seven, nine, and twenty. Okay, and out of those organisms, uh, if you remember them, we can get back to them and we see them. We have organism. I've chosen one. I chose number three, number five, number seven, number nine, and then number organism number. 20 because the question was asking us to the question was asking us to uh, construct a flow chart for any six organisms in the pictures using their observable characteristics okay as this flow chart would help us in in identifying those six organisms that you select randomly okay and the, for for my particular one since I've selected the my six number one three five seven nine and twenty, those are the organisms which I have selected, and these are all invertebrates actually, which lack they lack a backer bone. When you are constructing flow chart, you have to look at observable characteristics. Like in this case, the old organisms we are looking at are, are uh, invertebrates. Okay, now them being invertebrates, so we now have to divide them into two. All right, we have to look at those whose body is divided into segments. Okay, and when we look at those whose body is divided into segments out of the group, I took three and five. That is, the, I took this three, three uh, has a segmented body, and then five, these are, have also segmented the body. These ones belong to, we talked about them previously, yeah. Uh, this one ha has, you can see the very many body segments. This one, you can see it being, uh, last time we identified the three as what? Who remembers what three was? Yes, please. What was the organism number three? Yes, please. Can I get a response? What was organism number three? Yes, Maweje. Yes. Uh, Maria Spy Vanessa? It's a spider, All right? That is very good, eh? The organism was, is a spider, okay? And the, so we have taken three and the five, we, what is organism five? Organism five, yes, 
Sasila. Sent please. Oh, so, oh, organism five is another trial. The lipid. Yes, very good. That is a uh, a millipede. Okay, it is a millipede. So in uh, our activity, uh, so we have seen these ones. Their body is divided into segments, which we can see, right? They have segmented bodies as arthropods. Arthropods. Then we have organism. Now you see, out of the other six, now you can see they have a, a grouped certain five, two out of the. I mean, with some five. Eh? This way, so I will have those which lack segments or segmented body. That is number one, seven, nine, and twenty. If you can see number one, seven, and twenty uh, in the in the picture, number one is here. Then number 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 seven, you can see it here. Uh, number one, seven, and nine, and then twenty. Twenty is there. It, it truly shows us that uh, these one, seven, nine, and twenty, they they lack segments on the body. We are, we are constructing a flow chart basing on observable characteristics and out of the 20 organisms we had asked you only to pick six and you're able to construct a flow a flow chart okay and now this flow chart like the one i've constructed in this case now i've already removed the two then the other five are on the other side so what i do now maybe what i didn't do is numbering so this was the number one body divided in two segments not what you have to make sure is that you use the same if you are it's body divided in two segments then you should have an alternative okay uh, like the difference the uh, contrasting characteristic of these if these are divided in two segments they are the contrasting characteristics okay uh, then uh, we now move to these two so that we can identify them. The role of a, of a flow chart is to ensure that each of the organisms selected is at the end of the day, it should be identified as alone. Like now out of these two, I look at them now at, at level number three, all right? Where I will see that now, if I look at these two, three and five. So by looking at three and five, like in the picture now, I'm looking at specifically three, and the five okay so i should find uh, an, an, another uh, contrasting characteristics between the three and the five alone that's why uh, in the flow chart i've said now one has two main body divisions then the other one has three main body what so i've looked at body divisions and i realized that if i use body divisions i can be able to distinguish uh between these two now okay so at, at the end of the day now i have been able to clearly identify uh sort out those two which we are having the similar characteristics now i've sorted them out into individual characteristics the other one has a three this one has what five so now i am done with that that second level I've identified those ones now I have to move to the other group which I left those which lack segment are we following are you following yes Kusachi. shall we are following I okay that is nice to hear okay now so we have these other five now which we are we had not identified okay so we now also look what they are that is one seven nine and twenty if i go back here uh, that is one seven nine and twenty so one is there i have uh, seven here i have nine and then i have what organism what 20. so i have also now to see something that I can use to, I, to at least separate some organisms out of this. So I've decided to look at the body organism with the powers, and I've selected only nine. If you look at this nine 
organism nine is a sponge, okay? And the sponge, it has very many powers, okay? It is a polyphyla, so that's why it belongs to phylum polyphyla. These are both organisms with powers all over the, the body. Therefore, there is another group of now four organisms, one, seven, and is it? Yeah, now four, one, seven, and 20, which have no powers all over the body. Okay, so I've now clearly identified the nine, okay, then uh, uh, later I go on to the next level. I look at these ones which are still really 17 and 20. I look at what, can, what characteristics can I take into consideration to clearly identify 17 and 20. So I go to back to the organisms. I look at uh, one, uh, I look at one, then I come and look at uh, seven, and then uh, later I look at what? Organism what? 20. After looking at them critically, looking for their characteristics, I realized I could use the, uh, like a, have no star limbs. Then it has five star limbs or star-like limbs or arms. And that was the organism 20. which we separated as a starfish, okay? You can see these five star arms on starfish. They do not have that such arrangement of limbs, okay? So clearly it was showing me that I would use that to separate 20, then I remain with one and seven. After looking at one and seven, if I go back to the organism, one and seven, this is number one here, then, then I also have number, seven here. So my number seven, I looked at them critically and then I realized I can look at one which has a shell, then another one lacks, has no what? Shell, okay? So uh, if we go back to, to these organisms, we realize that the, uh, actually one is, uh, is what? A snail and another one is what? A slug, okay. Number one is a slug, then number seven is what? A snail. So I would use the, those and I identify those organisms. Now, if you give me uh, this uh, one of these, uh, so I, I'm now done with the flow chart because I've been able to identify each one organism from a group based on their characteristics. Now, if you asked me, if you brought me, for example, uh, organism five, and you, you want me to talk about it, I would use this flow chart to look for five. First of all, five lacks a backbone. Then five has, has a body divided into segment, and five has three uh, main body divisions. And that five we are talking about is it truly really, uh, a millipede? Okay, he does not have uh, it, it belongs according to our flow chart. I can use the flow chart to identify a particular organism, like uh, let's say I'll say I want an organism, one which lacks a body, a backbone, a body divided into segments, and then it has the three main body divisions. Okay, so out of this, if if I the I uh, looked at only those seven. You, uh, my description of in the flow chart would bring me to organism number five, which does not have uh, does not have uh, a backbone. Uh, has uh, body is divided into segments. It has a three main body division. This organism has a head. It has a very small thorax and then a, a cylindrical abdomen. The largest part of the body is the abdomen. Rude describes a uh, millipede. If I took for an organism, uh, one which is an lacks a backbone out of this, uh, does not have, is not segmented, then apart from that, it's not segmented, 
then it has powers. If there are only three, I would see that one would bring me to that organism which I call number number nine. Using the flow chart, I should be able to identify a particular organism from the group which I had what which I have selected. Okay. So like in this case, I've selected those five, number one, three, five, seven, nine, and 20, okay? I can use this flow chart to clearly uh, identify each particular organism. That is the importance of a flow chart, okay? It is a tool we use in identifying organisms in the classification. Actually, it is a tool used by taxonomists to identify what organisms basing on their observable what? characteristics, okay? And the characteristics to choose should be those that are permanent, okay? But even if this organism was preserved, then that characteristic would still be seen after some time. Yeah? So we don't normally use things like a color. For example, if you're looking at plants, you cannot say green, because if you preserve or keep for some time, the green may disappear. So you can say, has chlorophyll, those ones which disappear. So things that can disappear, we don't look at them. Look at permanent features, which are observable. You don't talk about what you don't see when you are writing or drawing a flow chart. And for a number of activities, which are really required to, to construct or to draw a flow, flow charts for, for that particular case, like this one. So the act. The activity which we had uh, was asking us to construct a flow chart for any six organisms in the pictures using their observable characteristics. If you have not done one, I would ask you to take a screenshot or look at the learner's text which I shared with you, and you are able at least to construct a flow chart which exactly looks like mine, okay? Maybe for purposes of like example, you can take a screenshot of, of, of mine and you are so that you can be able to, to what? You can be able to, 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 to use that as an example when you are constructing your own flow, your own flow chart. Let me give you a minute to take a screenshot of those two. Later, you will use them uh, when you are uh doing your work uh this is the work which i left last time okay and i expected you to do the same uh, like you, you can also take a screenshot of that it can guide you in constructing a flow chart even that you can take a screenshot and see how you can uh, use it to construct your Oh, and please make sure these activities that we give, you take time and look at them because it's very important for us. After doing, uh, we should be able to look at, uh, to do some activities on our own, okay? That will show that uh, maybe we are following what is, the, we are following uh, what is going, what is going on in this case, okay? Uh -huh. All right. Do we have any concern uh, pertaining that work? Yes, Priscilla. Abdu, any concern before I continue? All right. If there is no concern, then let us proceed. That was the activity that we had last time, okay? Now, today, uh, we are going to look at uh, another phylum. Uh, this is the phylum uh, of phylum Codata. Remember, we said that Kingdom Animalia is divided into nine phyla. Uh, eight of which was involving the invertebrates, and then the other only one with vertebrates has the organism which we call the codates. Okay, uh, can we have uh, a discussion on this? And you can, uh, someone should read for us 
and later we take a discussion of codex. Someone is going to do it for us, that's, that work. Anyone volunteering to take us through? Yes, Mawiji. 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 Okay, can I ask you, uh, Maria? Are you ready? Maria Aibare. Okay, Nabisere. Nabisere. Yes. Yes, teacher. Yeah. Okay, can you take us through? We are listening, everyone is listening to you. Now we have you gone off? Yes, teacher. Teacher, I'm, I'm having a network problem. Let me check. I okay. Okay, let, let, let me choose someone else. Uh, okay, jo Jovia. Jovia. Jovia, she's not on. Can I choose Martha? Martha? Not available. Ingrid? Yes, Ingrid, can you take us through? Can you, okay. Okay, Teddy. Teddy, can you take us through? Anyone know? Okay, any volunteer? Tendo? Ingrid? Teacher, through my flow chart. You, you so have I a flow chart? I want you to take us through my flow chart. Can you able yes. to? Okay, you can. I have mine in my book. Okay. How did you go about it? I wrote about inverter breaks. Okay. Picture three, five, seven, twelve, sixteen, seventeen, and twenty. Okay. Have a have a had outer skeleton. Bye. Are you listening? Yes. Bye. They have legs. Can many people? Yeah. Can people unmute and we follow? We have a discussion on her her work. Okay, you can continue, please. Yes, they have three pairs of legs on the thorax. So which one did you choose then for the that case? the part, they don't have legs. That's the snail number seven. So, okay, you, you, okay, you get number seven there, all right. I chose a spider. A spider. Yes. Then I also cho chose a snail. Mm -hmm. A snail does not have legs. Yes. Okay. Can you continue? Hello? 
problem. You have a problem? Teacher, I was still continuing, then my network got a problem. Okay. We can now hear you very well. Teacher? Yes, please. Are we saying great? Okay, we, we, we might be having some challenge here getting uh, to her. Uh, she was trying to share with us her flow, her flow chat. However, the issue about the flow chart, like if I remember telling you, you must have pre-selected the organisms before. So don't just select in time. Eh? Make sure that if you have selected those seven, you stick to those seven and find a way of writing the characteristics, okay? So like there's, there's a time when she talked about the uh, number of legs and the, uh, like uh, she was able to, to show us of number three and then uh, a snail. So I, I don't know how it had come all about, but you have to make sure that uh, at a particular, a particular characteristic you choose, either has some groups, all right, which should be separating them from the many that you started with. Like uh, if you can see clearly here, we started with the seven, six, Later, we, we removed the two, remained with five the other side. We worked on these two, we identified each of them. So we came to sort out now these five, where we had to look at now other characteristics, eh, which would now remove, which removed the number nine, just because of body powers. We remained with those without body uh, powers. Then even those ones, we had to look for characteristics that could separate them. That's when we came up with those with the five star in the other ones without them. So we got 20 off, the stuff fish off, and remained with this one and seven, which we are both, which we are both, uh, which we, uh, we are both uh, one. One have, was having a shell, another does not have what? One, another does not have, another, another does not have, uh, uh, a shell, but both of them, if you look at them, they are Molluscan. Yeah, they, they belong to they are Molluscans. Eh? They belong to that phylum we call phylum what? Mollusca. Okay, that is a slug and then a snail. But there are some uh, characteristics we can distinguishing characteristics that we can use to identify them. Okay, that is what she was taking us through. However, I, I wanted someone to take us through now phylum Codata. Phylum Codata. Yes. Mawijek. Yes, Mawijek, can you take us through the, the, work, the, the screen I've shared? Yes. Okay, if I may ask, what are codecs? What are codecs? What are codecs? My class, don't make it too boring today. Yes, Esther, unmute and tell us. Joram, unmute and tell us, let us have a discussion. Can we unmute and we have a discussion? Uh, yes, Joram. Codex are vertebrates. So what are they? Can we, can we all unmute and we have a, a discussion of codex? We are having an open discussion of codates. Unmute unless you are in a noisy place, if you are in a workshop uh, where people are doing a uh, hitting here and there, then maybe you are at home where some people are noisy, maybe you can leave. 
but if you are in a quiet place, and I would prefer if you are coming for a lesson, in many times you choose uh, a place mm -hmm. which is not noisy, okay? So we have a discussion. The discussion is on codates, okay? We won't talk about them now, okay? We want uh, by reading it through, and then uh, you tell us what are they. Someone told us they are vertebrates, and the question was, what makes them vertebrates? Backbone. Yes. Uh, having what? Having a backbone, that is very good. Having what we call a backbone, which a backbone is called a vertebral column. So they possess that vertebral column, which is what makes them to be vertebrates or to belong to that uh, uh, phylum we call vertebrata, or you can call it codata. Okay? So they are codates. For, for that case, okay. Uh, is anyone re ready to read through? They all Rabbit. have. They all have an endoskeleton. All right. Can you read it through before we take a discussion? Proceed, please. Joram, can you proceed? We need to take an understanding of these organisms or, or the members of this group we call the vertebrates. Are you able to see the screen I'm sharing? And if you are able to see, can we can we read through it? Yes, Teddy. Teddy? Joram, can you read? Joram? So I'm seeing a deep screen. You're seeing what? A different screen. Okay, okay, let me. Is it okay now? No. No teacher, not yet. Okay now. Yes. Yes. Okay. Can we can we go through? I take that through. Jonah mm -hmm. or Joram. Codates. Okay, but yeah. Members members of this group are also referred to as vertebrates, have a backbone. They all have an endoskeleton, inner skeleton comprising a skull, backbone, limb bones, and ribs. They have a dorsal nerve cord or the spinal cord 
Most vertebrates apart from fish have four. Have, have four limbs which they use for locomotion. In, in birds and bats, the front limbs develop into wings for flying. A fish's limbs <clears throat> are its fins, which vary in which vary in number. Snakes have no limbs. Accordates comprise five classes. The fish, which are, which are the species, amphibians, reptiles, birds, which are also referred as to apes, and five other mammals. Okay, very, 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 very good. Okay, very good. Uh, the previous one uh, was the try helping us to understand uh, what 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 codex was helping us what codex I know. And that is that is what uh, that is what uh, we need to know about uh, codex one as uh, having backbone. Okay. okay? That is why we call them codex or vertebrates, okay? Uh, and, the, and the inner skeleton. You know, as we say, the other group was either having an outer skeleton or without uh, that outer skeleton, if it was there. Then uh, having a nerve cord, or what we call the spinal, the spinal cord, that is actually one of the characteristics of codex, having a, a nerve cord, uh, having a, a, a a, a tail, we call it prenatal tail, okay? Or most of them have that tail or prenatal tail. In some, it remains even after, uh, or, or it, on, it is only seen during uh, the early stages of development, like uh, in humans, okay? We don't retain that tail. They, they, even the other primates, they don't, they even got the chimps, they don't have, they don't have that tail, okay? So other organs, but when, during the early stages of development, when you are still in the uterus, we possess it, but later it goes off. That means by possessing it, it is one of the characteristics of what? Codex, others, they retain it, okay? Other organisms or other codex, you find they have that tail. So nerve cord, uh, then the, um, a prenatal tail, a tail, is the one main characteristic of these codex. And then you know, what we call uh, slits of panangular slits, which for us we retain as a, a, a stationary tube. Others you see those slits that they remain. So they have uh, those, those three main ones uh, make uh, what we call a, a codex. However, the issue here is that uh, uh, they have ways of movement. We have those which have limbs. We have those we, without. Like we, we have said, the snakes, which are reptiles, they don't have limbs. Actually, the truth about to the snakes is that uh, they, are, they, would, they have like uh, buds where limbs were supposed to develop from, but they do not come out. If we, critically a snake is observed by dissection, you would see where limbs were supposed to develop from. Uh, but the, the, those birds remain inside the body, they do not protrude out, okay? That, that means they don't, we don't see the limbs, okay? But a quick analysis uh, uh, has shown that birds where limbs from, but he, those limbs did not develop. So they lack, uh, they lack those limbs. Yes, steady. Steady? I'm asking, what is the use of a spinal cord? What is the use of a, a spinal, spinal cord? cord? Yeah. OK. Uh, can anyone help us understand the use of a spinal cord? Anyone who can help my friend, Teddy? Teddy, uh, anyone who can help if I come in? Now, uh, tell me if you look at your brain, yeah, your brain has a continuation or a, I would call it a stem, which moves to the lower parts of the body. And if you look at your back, your backbone, there is a, 
a, a continuation of the brain, okay? So a spinal cord is a continuation of the brain, yeah? Which brain has the role of coordinating body activities. So the, since the, the spinal cord extends to the lower parts of the body, there are certain uh, body activities which have to be coordinated to, by the by the spinal the spi by the spinal cord yeah for example if you step on something hot that information must go to the spinal cord and it can be handled there and then or even information the spinal cord can communicate because the spinal cord is part of the central it's part of the, what we call the central nervous system okay so which is supposed to coordinate body activities. So in simple terms, I, let me tell you that the spinal cord is part of the brain, which extends to the lower parts of the, of the body, okay? So it does some activities just like the brain does. So it is involved, involved in the coordinating body activities. Are we together? Yes, teacher. Okay. Okay, so next time you will have to be very careful with your uh, spinal cord. Once it gets damaged, you can get paralyzed for life or you can even die. Yes, you can die because it is one of the delicate. That's why it is even protected by the vertebral column, that those bone, bones of the backbone, okay, which right from that backbone purpose to protect that spinal. Cord, just like the brain is protected by the skull. And this part of the, of the brain just needs to be protected for that case. Okay. Um, Excuse me, Chuck. Excuse yes. me, Chuck. Can you scroll back? Uh, to here. Thank you, teacher. Okay. Uh, now, so limbs, uh, they're used for locomotion uh, and in some, bi some organisms in this group, which I find like the birds and bats, they have one hind limbs and four limbs. If you look at your body, the, what you call your hands, we call them four limbs. What you call your legs, we call them the hind limbs, okay? Those ones should not confuse you, okay? You can call them four limbs, hind limbs. Now, uh, for birds, if you look at them, what would be their four limbs? And now the ones which are used as wings, okay? They will actually are modified into wings for flight. Birds can fly, birds can walk. So the hind limbs are the, the ones which they can use for walk, but walking on land. But if they need to fly to move into air, they use their four limbs, okay? That's the modification they have got. But if you look at fish, fish have no limbs as such, but they have an alternative, which are called the scale, I mean, fins, yeah? You, you can see uh, those fish we have, we have that tilapia, catfish, the shark, okay? All those fish, you can see how they have different types of what? Uh, fins, okay? Those fins uh they are like here they, here you see the pectoral fins the pelvic fins the caudal fin yeah of this sea tilapia fish uh above here we have that dorsal fin those are different fins okay which the fish uses here is the anal fish an anal fin or the ventral fin on a tilapia these are the ones which are used for uh, movement in the fish, okay? They are an alternative of, uh, they are the alternative of the limbs that other codets have, okay? Because I've said there are some those which can fly, those which can walk, and the number of them, okay? Uh, I also talked about the snakes, which lack limbs. And uh, these codets uh, have been grouped into five classes. That is the class uh, which we call a fish, the, the pieces. Uh, then the amphibia, class amphibia, class reptilia, uh, then class elves or the birds, then class mammalia. I told you that these names are, which are used in our books here, they, they represent 
the the organisms in those particular classes okay but the actual class would be amphibia leptilia aves mammalia okay and then pieces or the fish okay so those are the five classes remember codec codata or codex though that is a phylum then in this below the phylum we have the class okay just now we are looking at the different classes of phylum codata and we are seeing them as the five particular classes there okay and the, uh, right here we can see the fish now someone can take us through fish need to take an understanding of fish yes please can someone take us through fish yes oscar oscar Fish live in water, their bodies. Maybe Oscar has some challenges. I mean, what I was talking here has some challenges. Can we get another person? Me too. Yes. Yes, please come on. Fish live in water. Their bodies are covered with scales for protection, and they have fins and tails for movement and stability in water. Fish are ectotherms. Fish use gills for gas exchange. Fish is formed for fish is fish is food for many other animals okay so the point is fish is food for many other animals that is very good okay so they live in water that's how they're using wow. like they can be used for food by others but uh, what we call organisms which live in water yes please response Maweje, Alfred, amphibians. Oh, sorry. Uh, aquatic animals. animals. Very nice. Okay. So they, they are called aquatic organisms. Okay. They are the organisms which live in the, in the, they live in the, in the water. And the uh, what do you think is the role of the scales? Uh, which are found here all over the body of fish. I think for protection. Very nice. For okay. protection. They, yes. they serve the role of protection. protection. And while in water, they face uh, some form of instability. Like uh, if just fish when in the water, they, they face instability. How does fish go about instability in water? What helps it to overcome the problem of instability. You know, understand the word instability? For example, if you are walking, you may start experience like a staggering, okay? And even the ground where you step on, yeah? And it, it sometimes it can lead you to fall, all right? But in many times you are able to, to balance and you don't fall. So even if fish while it is in water, it experiences some forms of instabilities, okay? So the issue is the, how, how, how does fish go about these instabilities? It uses its tail. Its tail, the fin, yeah? To be specific, it uses fins, okay? Uh, the, uh, first of all, the tail is what, uh, the tail of fin or cord of fin is what initiates uh, movement in the fish, okay? It is the one that first uh, generates the force that pushes the fish forward, okay? So, uh, however, when it starts moving in water, it, you know, water is a viscous medium, 
uh, that it would be very difficult to go through. So uh, walking or moving in water, okay, moving in water would be very difficult for the aquatic organisms. That's why they have five have different ways of overcoming these instabilities, like uh, rolling. Yeah, as it is moving, it can be rolling over. Yeah, there are many. There's another one called pitching, yawing. Those are different instabilities that fish find or, or gets while in water. But with the help of its fins, it is able to control its movement. That's why we say here that it is, they, they, they have fins and tails for movement and stability in the water. Now, another final thing we can talk about fish is being ectotherms. What do we mean by an organism being an ectotherm? Yes, please. What do we mean by an organism being an ectotherm? Yes, Alfred. Yes, uh, Maweje. Maweje. Organisms. With body temperatures, an ectotherm is an organism with whose body temperature change according to their external environment. Very good. Okay, they have organisms whose body temperature is, will vary with that of the environment where they live. Okay. So if they like, meaning that if the body, the temperature, if the environmental temperatures increase, even the body temperature of this organism will increase. If the environmental temperatures really decrease, it automatically uh, for this organism to survive, they must also change their body temperature to that. Okay. So they cannot have a, a constant body temperature like we do. So the opposite would have what we call the endotherms, like uh, humans, okay? Our body temperature remain constant irrespective of the environmental temperature. But for these ectotherms, for them, their body temperature is dictated by the environment, okay? And the organisms that do that, the fish, uh, the amphibians, and then the reptiles, okay? Out of these five classes, it is only uh, the birds and mammals that can maintain a constant uh, body temperature irrespective of the environment. That's why we call them endotherms. But the other ones are ectotherms. The other first three are ectotherms uh, whose body temperature will, will vary. Uh, it has advantages and disadvantages. Uh, one um, uh, disadvantage is that uh, such organisms cannot live anywhere. So their environment where they can live, they are limited to the environments where they can they can live. Okay, so if they go to a new environment where they cannot regulate easily, they will just die. Whereas those which are ectotherms, they can live in any environment okay, because they are able to maintain a constant body temperature irrespective of the environmental changes. Now this one they can't then the other advantage is even the food they eat they need less energy to survive because they don't use food to regulate body temperature like the the birds and mammals the birds need really a lot of energy to maintain a constant body temperature that one will necessitate them to to have uh, to eat a much food so the the food requirements for egg, and ectotherms is less. Fish can survive on very little food in a day, okay? Because they don't use uh, temperature. I mean, they don't use their food to regulate temperature for that case. And many others that we can uh, talk about. We're talking about fish, then since they live in water, they survive by uh, having gills for gas exchange. Okay, those gills can only be used in water. Actually, when you get a fish out of water, it will suffocate. Whereas in water, there's very little oxygen, uh, but that is about 
compared to what fish will die if brought on land because the system that they have suits them to pick up oxygen which is in water not the one which is in it in the atmosphere, the oxygen must be dissolved in water that they live in. So they have a system of gills to pick up that uh, oxygen for, for that case. And as an advantage, these organisms are food. They are used as food uh, to many organisms where they, they live out together. So uh, we have been looking at, uh, we have been looking at if, uh, uh, looked at uh, the codex, but before that we looked at the activity where we can construct a flow chart uh, basing on observable characteristics of organisms. And when you do that, we are able to classify uh, different uh, organisms. I'll add you to try out more flow charts uh, basing on one which I showed you before, if you can see it now. Then I uh, also look, we have looked at the codates as the organism with the vertebral column or backbone, and they give five classes which they have been divided. In. And particularly today, we have looked at the fish or pieces as the first phylum of these organisms. We have looked at some examples of fish shark, catfish, tilapia, and many, and some observable body characteristics or characteristics which they possess, and we have uh, this, uh, explained them much in that case. That is what we have see, looked at today, and it looks like uh, we have run out of time, unless there is an issue uh, to be discussed. Yes. Yes, please.